Did you hear the joke about the guy who went ice fishing in a bass boat? Oh wait, that's not a joke. It's today's episode. I mean, you'd think one would just swim into the hook. Eventually. Maybe I should have left this lake closed. In a land like no other. On a lake like you've never seen. Well, maybe you've seen lakes like this. But there is an angler so great, he once set the hook so hard he turned a small mouth into a large mouth. He can unscramble an egg. He made his first cast at the age of three and it landed yesterday. We join him to chronicle one day on one lake. This is Facts of Fishing, the show. Here we go. Welcome to Facts of Fishing, the show. Brought to you by Bass Pro Shops. Your adventure starts here. Yamaha, conquer water. Phoenix Bass Boats, experience the Phoenix difference. Live Target, lifelike lures. Action car and truck accessories, the right customer experience. And Jackal, eat, sleep, Jackal. like ice fishing. I mean, all we're doing is making a hole and then trying to make it bigger. The wind and the water become our friend now. Once you get that ice starting to break up, you know, I'm gonna make a few laps around this little lake and it'll start spreading out. Basically, the water starts rolling over that ice, breaking it up and helping me. But we gotta get it started. Come on, I know it's cold. Come on, you gotta eat. I just made it spring for you, fish. I mean, you'd think one would just swim into the hook. Eventually. Suddenly I'm starting to feel like the dude in the movie that opens the vault or the tomb or something and instantly regrets opening it. Maybe I should have left this lake closed. I mean, nature closed it. How foolish of me to think I know better. This segment is brought to you by ARE Truck Caps. ARE, outfit for life. Come on, they got to use jerk bait. Figure out what these fish are going to eat. Ooh, forgot about one of the most important cold water tips there is. You know, I spent a lot of time bending over and scooping fish normally on this show, but in these conditions, you definitely want to have a net. Just keeps your hands a whole lot warmer. I mean, you know, fishing beside the boat, you're gonna dump your hands in the water to land it. I mean, I'll dump my head in the water if I have to, to land it, but uh, in these cold conditions, you're gonna regret that in a hurry. 
always, always have a net ready for those conditions. And your hands won't get near as cold. Just gotta find a way to catch the first one. I think if I can figure out the way to catch the first one, I can duplicate it. But boy, these are about as tough of conditions as you could ask for. A deep diving jerk bait like this little rainbow smelt is basically the perfect situation for cold, cold water like this. I mean, I can cover water, but I can also kill it and let it sit. And I'm gonna let it sit for a long, long time. And every time I let that sit, I'm trying different retrieves, you know? I'm gonna let it sit for as little as half a second, but as much as sometimes 10 seconds. But once you figure out what those fish want, you duplicate it, you're gonna catch more. I just gotta figure out what the first one wants. Or else this show can be really boring. Hey, remember that guy who broke all that ice and didn't catch a bass? Nobody wants to be that guy. There's fish. Finally. Finally. Oh, super, super slow with the jerk bait. Oh, we finally got one. A pretty decent one, too. Oh, no, he's getting smaller. He's getting smaller. Oh, I don't even need the net for this little dude. Come on up here. Fish number uno, and I wish right now we had the technology to give you guys feelovision. vision but if you had a feelovision, vision you would feel just how cold this little dude feels. He just swatted at that little jerk bait, but it just shows, I mean, you go through a bunch of baits, and sooner or later, you're finally gonna figure out something to trigger them, even on December 1st, as nasty cold as it is here today. Whew, he ate that little jerk bait. Got something to build on now. Go on back in there. <laughs> nasty, nasty cold. But there's no better way to warm up than figuring out how to make them bite. And this deep diving jerk bait, just leaving it just to pause for a long, long time. And that fish, I mean, it just came behind it and it was just like a marshmallow, just they're not hammering it. You gotta remember, I mean, it's December 1st. The lake froze overnight. I mean, it was not frozen yesterday, but it froze overnight. This is uh, about as adverse a conditions as any fishing show has ever been shot in. Why? Well, I'd like to say it's because I'm tougher than the others, but really it's just because we're dumber. Oh, I shouldn't have put my hand in the water. Didn't I just do a tip about that? one. I kept saying I just got to get one and figure out a way to build on it. Well, we got one. Time to start building. See long, long pauses I'm making. You know, I pop that little suspending jerk bait. I let it sit there and pop it again and just let it sit there. It gets the fish's attention. You know, they swim up, they look at it. And it's the whole fact that that bait doesn't move that triggers them to eat. It's cold, this water's cold. They're not in the mood to chase down a lot of bait. You need to get something that convinces them to munch. Oh, came off one of those stems and I felt, Bonk. 
That's going to be one of the things you're going to get used to fishing in this ultra, ultra cold water. Fish don't chase your bait like they do in the summer months. A lot of time in the summer months, you miss a fish and that fish will come back, you know, by the time you get your bait back to the boat. They got a small little zone and they don't want to move out of it when the water's this cold. Oh, I had one whack at it. They're sitting in that weed. Found the fish, just gotta find the right tool or the right bait to get them out of there. The jerk bait just keeps getting hung up in the weed, so a little swim bait may be the key. You know, really, that's the way you want to start thinking about lures. I mean, a lot of times people will say, oh, what's your favorite lure? What lure do you like to throw? You got to think about them the same way, you know, a mechanic or a carpenter thinks about, you know, tools. If you, if you went to a mechanic and said, you know, what's your favorite tool? They don't have a favorite tool. They have a favorite tool for certain jobs. And that's exactly the way you should think of your lures. You know, I found them with that jerk bait but I just keep getting hung up in those weeds, so trying different baits, something that'll work through those weeds a little better. Get the right tool, and you'll get the right results. Stop thinking about baits about, that's my favorite, I'd love to catch them on this. You can have a favorite, but just like an effective mechanic, an effective plumber, an effective contractor, you've gotta be effective with all your tools. See what I'm doing here, I'm holding that line up as that bait drops. You know, in this cold water, a lot of times your most effective cast is that first initial drop. You know, it slowly falls down in front of those fish. But if you've got your rod tip down, you're never gonna feel it. Always lift your rod as that bait is dropping. It just allows you to stay in contact with that bait. And if anything comes anywhere near it, I'll be able to whack it. On a day like today, bites are gonna be few and far between, and you gotta make sure that you capitalize on every single one of them. Or else, you end up looking like that idiot that smashed all the ice to catch one one pound bass. Wonder who that idiot would be. There he is, there's the idiot. That one right there, that's the idiot. This is the biggest blob of weed, or it's a little fish in the weed, and I think it's both. Come here, it's actually getting bigger. I'll show you how they fight this time of year. Oh man, look at that fish right there. I mean, that's exactly a prime example of how they fight this time of year. I mean, basically, your rod is just gonna load up. You know, no different than if it's if it's a, a big clump of weed. And every once in a while, that clump of weed turns out to be a very cold, but very welcome addition to the boat. Well, what'd you expect on December 1st? It is the December 1st bass bait down and suspended jerk baits seem to be what they want to munch munch. Another one. On the very next cast, another one eats it. When you find one, you will find more this time of year. Oh, come here, dude. These are not giants, but I'll tell you what, they're making me feel a whole lot better about breaking ice today. Little chunks, little chunks. I mean, I'll take them in the summer. You wouldn't even look at that fish, but it's December 1st. I mean, we came on the day that the lake actually froze. So beggars can't be choosers. Yo. 
and it's cold, but they are munching. This segment is brought to you by Hook Performance Fishing. There's fish. Smoked it. Oh, he's running. It's better fish, I think. Oh, this might not be a bass. This may not be a bass, people. Oh, this is an angry one. Easy. He, th he acts like he's done. See, that? that's what they do. And then they get ornery. I'm gonna spot lock and then grab his ornery face. Here's one of the tricks you wanna do with these bad boys. Give him a pop, quick little pop. See if he's calm. And when you commit, you commit and don't hold off. I mean, when you go to grab that fish, you know, people say, oh, I got bit by a pike or I got bit by a muskie. Generally, for the most part, nobody gets bit by these bad boys. They just basically, you know, their tooth ends up hitting them when they slash their head. And that's why you want to make sure you got control of them as soon as you grab them. Made my bait a little stinky. The fish swoop drink me. Oh, oh God, he's there. It was a good one. It was a good one. I'm all about setting records. I mean, I. Uh, you guys might not know this, but I mean, you guys were part of a record. I mean, I, I think I can officially go on record and say this is officially the least amount of fish we've ever caught on Facts of Fishing. So, you know, I thank viewers a lot of times for watching, but I, I really want to thank you guys because there hasn't been much to watch, has there? It's not all about the fishing. I'm getting sick and tired of watching fishing shows. It's all about, ooh, ooh we're gonna catch big fish and I'm better than everybody. That is not what this fishing show says. There's so much more we enjoy in the outdoors outside of actually catching fish. All right, three more casts and we're done. Please, dear fish gods. I mean, maybe I gotta shave the beard, I don't know. I get it, it looks spectacular, I mean, but if I can't catch fish, I'll just always be sad in the beard. Last cast. My bait got messed up, I get another one. It's in the angler's code of ethics. If your last cast gets screwed up, you definitely get an extra. All right, I get it. I mean, I, I understand if you're watching. I mean, if, if anybody is, is, is anyone still watching? Well, I mean, my kids, I mean, my, ki my kids are probably watching. Well, whoever's watching, thank you. And I know what some of you are thinking, you know, 
how unlucky. I mean, we came to a lake on the worst conditions possible. I mean, we didn't come here a few days after it froze. We came in the actual day it froze. The night before, not frozen. The next morning, frozen. And I mean, a lot of people think we got unlucky to do that, but I, I mean, I, I think we're super lucky. I mean, think about it, every year, I don't, I don't care where you're from. I mean, if you're from the north and you're near a lake that freezes, every year they have contests all around the world that people have to guess the exact day the lake freezes. Well, if that's sufficient, we did that. We won. We're all winners. But the fishing sucked. <laughs> Turn the cameras off. I mean, it's just, it's over. Three tiny little fish. Three tiny little fish. August. Mental note. Let's shoot our shows in August. No more December 1st bass battles. I'm going home. Going home. <laughs> Dave fished for eight hours, made 362 casts, and caught four fish. That might be an all-time low, even for Dave. That's the score. Now time for the facts. Dave caught all his fish on a live target deep diving rainbow smelt jerkbait, fished on a six foot six inch medium heavy action spinning rod, spooled up with 10 pound test braid and an eight pound test XPS Bass Pro Shops fluorocarbon leader. And that's the facts.